Welcome to this Revit instruction video for the Harkness Cinema Screen families. These families are designed to help the user visualize the reflected light back from the cinema screen in order to improve the viewing experience for the maximum number of cinema goers. In this video, we'll cover loading the families, placing them into a Revit project, configuring them, and the included data within the families. Firstly, loading the families. This is simple. We can use the Insert tab and Load Family and navigate to the family location. We can use the Architecture tab and Component, place a component and then Load Family. Or we can simply drag and drop the family files into Revit directly from Windows. I'm going to drag all three of the downloaded files into my Revit project. While these are loading, you can see that Revit wants to upgrade them as I'm using Revit 2017 and the models have been produced in Revit 2014. You can open the downloaded files separately and save them in the version of Revit that you want them to remain in. Once files have been upgraded to a new release of Revit, they cannot be downgraded again and they won't be viewable in earlier releases. Once the families have been loaded into my Revit project, I can access them in the project browser, families, generic models. Here's my three families based on screen ratio, a custom screen ratio of my choice, flat screen ratio of 1.85 to 1, a scope ratio of 2.39 to 1. Each of these three families has 12 types, simply based on screen coating. The screen coating determines the reflectivity of the screen and we visualize this with a 50% brightness cone volume of light to see which cinema goers get a good viewing experience. Let's drag one of these types into the project. I can place in 3D if I wish and choose the desired level or we recommend that you place in a plan view. So let's hit escape and go up to a plan view. Level zero and I can drag and drop. I'm going to choose a type from the scope family. I can hit spacebar to rotate as I'm placing and snap to objects. And I hit escape to not place another one. And then I can select and move around with the arrow keys for precise movements if desired, the arrow keys on your keyboard. And then I can begin configuring the screen. Firstly, I want to change the curve of the screen. It's currently 5%. If I type in different numbers and move my mouse onto the screen here, then I can quickly determine that a 2% curve is what's required. I can then use the arrow keys on my keyboard to position precisely this screen in space. I can pin the screen in position. Once I'm sure it's in the right place, let's look in the 3D view. It needs a vertical offset. And for that, I can select it and simply use the offset parameter, in this case, 5 meters. Now I can pin the screen in position if desired. And I can begin to make further adjustments. Let me change the screen height. I can type in a number and choose the screen height I wish. And you can see the screen width updates based on the screen ratio. This box here represents the projector position and this cone represents the 50% brightness cone of light reflected from the center of the screen. If we look in a plan view, what we can see is that as the projector is moved left or right by selecting the family and adjusting projector offset, we can see that the cone of light honors the horizontal position of the projector and we have an equal angle of incidence and reflection. The same is true in a elevation. You can see currently the projector is in line with the center of the screen. However, if I adjust the projector height dramatically, we can see that we have a, the angle of incidence and reflection again being equal. With that in mind, we can go to the 3D view and we can position this projector in the correct place based on our projection room up here. 
also using the projector distance from the screen. Having done this before, I know that this is 21600, the distance to the back. The height is 2800. And the offset is 1540. This positions the projector in the center of the aperture. And there is my reflected cone of light from the center of the screen. OK, now we can easily adjust the type of screen coating to determine the difference this makes to this cone. And we can do this by simply changing the type here. As mentioned before, the seats inside this cone will receive at least 50% of the peak brightness of the screen, which is recommended. Please refer to the Harkness website, contact Harkness for more information. Now let's look at the visibility parameters. We can switch the projector display on or off, as you can see. We can switch a packing tube on and off. This simply represents the approximate size of the shipping container that is required to roll this screen up. And this is designed to assist with the logistics for existing builds of renovations. For the scope and the flat screens, we have the option to add masking. So the scope allows masking vertically in order to reduce this to a 1.85 ratio screen. And the flat screen allows masking horizontally both above and below or simply above to produce a scope ratio screen of 2.39 to 1. And we can also turn the, vis the visibility of the cone on and off. Let's briefly look at the data inside the file by selecting it and choosing properties. We have some assistance helping you choose which type of per perforation to choose for the screen. Micro perforation, when you have front row of seats very close to the screen, or digital perforation when seats are further away from the screen. This is for information only. Some COBE data is included, empty IFC parameters for IFC 2 times 3, Uniclass 2, and URLs for further information. If I edit this family in its own context, there are a couple of extra parameters. Which are the minimum curve and the maximum curve. The minimum curve is set to 0.3 of a percent. This is due to Revit limitations. The maximum curve is currently set to 5% of the screen width. However, Harkness can provide cinema screens with a greater curve than 5%. Please contact them for details.